So I apologize for the view in this intro um, with the pillars in my shop and the size of my shop in general. This is kind of the best view I could get without having to completely rearrange the whole thing. But the basic gist of it can be seen um, to my right. And um, last week I showed making the main bulk of the pedestal. This week I'm going to show making the base as well as the stretcher across the bottom and these these um, top side stretchers or aprons as well. Now this base is pretty much done. I have a ton of sanding to do. Probably not going to film a lot of that because on camera uh, a couple hours worth of sanding really doesn't look like much. But um, the other thing I'm most likely going to do when I'm holding off on it until I get the, the size of the top and the weight of the top is going to be um, aprons connecting these two uh, these two end aprons as well. So stretchers or aprons, whatever you want to call them across both sides. Um, but like I said, I'm probably not going to do that till much later. There's also detail molding on the top and bottoms of these pedestals, which I'm also going to add um, a little bit later. But in general, this is, this is where I'm at. The base is pretty much done. I'm going to start the top next week. The top's going to be different than any other top I've made in the shop. And um, I'm going to use a lot, utilize a torsion box style top and also um, a vacuum pressing veneer machine. So I'm going to be showing you how I build that as well. So like I said in the beginning, this is going to be a pretty extensive series with multiple parts. I don't know how many yet, but this one will, will show you how I got to this point, which is, which is the bulk of the base build. So I didn't film it, but that big pat, uh, stack of wood I had, I basically ripped it down to size. Um, like I said, most of this stuff was pretty straight, so I was able to cut it on the table saw. I cut it into a couple sections, a bunch of slats to make up the bases. You can see these are going to have to go through the planer. And then um, the chunks that were left over was going to become those horizontal aprons on the top. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I just have these stacks of lumber and I'm just going to plane them all down so that when I put them together, when I glue them together, there's no big gaps. Um, this process is pretty long when doing oak in a huge stack like this. So I spent a couple hours um, getting these all down to size. After that, I could glue them up. I forget, I think it was seven or eight. I would have liked to have one more, but I just didn't have enough wood. So my the base of the pedestal is a little bit wider than, than this base, and you'll see how I deal with that um, in another video. But I'm basically just gonna laminate these all together. Um, my glue of choice is Type Bond 3 in the shop. So I'm just gonna work my way up. Obviously, I'm doing this with gravity on my side, so I don't get a ton of drips at this point and I'll flip these over and clamp them together. As I mentioned in another video, I don't use salt for this process. I let my stack sit up for a good five or 10 minutes and then add the clamps and then it usually doesn't move around on me too much. Um, I have these two by fours there just to, to make sure that this um, process stays pretty flat. And the, the, they also help with keeping this from sitting in a big pile of glue because you're going to have squeeze out, of course. And then I could just go through and clamp all this together. This is the part where I was saying the process takes forever. I just don't have enough clamps to glue up all this stuff at once. So it was multiple days of gluing all this stuff together. Then these are about four and a half inches tall by about 40 inches long and the lumber's all kind of varying sizes, but basically an inch wide. So I was able to send these, I scraped off most of the glue off the top, and then I was able to send those through my planer and, and true all these up. And then I could just trim them down to final size. I believe I trimmed these down to 39 inches, and the width of the table is gonna be about 40, 44 once it's all said and done. So I wanted these to be just about as wide as the table, but still a little space so you don't um, hit your foot at the bottom of the table. So for the pattern, I'm working off of a photo, so I pretty much drew this by myself. I had another one of these in the shop and I used that a little bit. I basically found center marked where the pedestal was going to be coming out of the top, which is this inner uh, rectangle. And then there's a little decorative element on the edge and then just a slope. So I cut out that pattern and that was how I could um, cut that out once those, those chunks were glued together. 
These are those horizontal aprons that are going on the top. There's four of them, so I'm gluing two together, and I'm gluing the whole stack at once to save time, but you can see I don't put glue in between um, the second and the third one, and uh, vice versa all the way up. So I'm making a, essentially a tenon on the bottom of this pedestal to sit in a rather large mortise in the base. I'm doing this before I cut them out so I have a flat surface to work off of. So I'm using a rather large 3 quarter inch straight cutting bit. And I have a jig that could have made this process a little easy, but because of the hump in the pedestal, I couldn't use it. So I basically just used a straight edge, and you can see I have pencil marks on the side to make sure that straight edge is square. And I could just go back and forth with this bit. Um, the key to this bit is to remove little little bits at a time. Say I do about a quarter inch at a time, and I'm going a little less than two inches down. And that will just make sure you don't put a, a ton of stress on the router and, and conserve the bit a little bit kind of the groove I'm left with. Now because this is going to be sunk into a mortise for that front side I'm just going to chisel it away. Um, it was pretty quick work because this is this is cutting up into the grain so that you could see the pieces just kind of flake off and I could clean up that with a plane. I do this process a little bit differently in the end when that one edge is going to be seen. Um, I don't I don't chisel it Similarly to this, just because that one edge I wanted clean, but since this one's going to be sunk in a mortise, it wasn't a big deal if there was a little bit of hairline cuts taken out of the edge. Like I said, I could clean that up with a plane, and then that is my tenon. So to cut the mortise, once again, I wanted this pretty clean. Woodworking can be a process, but usually most of the times that process makes life easier down the line. So all of these parts, in order for them to fit perfectly, um, I spent the time to make sure that all this was lined up well. You could drill these out with drill bits or whatnot, but the mortise and the the turning the router essentially into a movable mortising machine is what's going to be the easiest thing for me. So that jig, you could see I modified it because it's not deep enough to do this whole thing. So I just have the stop in the front and then the two stops on the side, and I'm basically going to cut each one of these edges out so I get four clean edges. I'll admit this was a process um, the way I did it, but I was happy with the results. So that's the bottom edge, and I could do um, this one, and then I could flip this over and do the top edge because it's, it's centered in this piece, and this goes down about two inches. Once that was done, I could do the edges, and so what I have here is essentially the same thing, but I have my stop set further back so that I could go forward and back with this instead of um, side to side. So I'm still using those side, side, side um, fences, but you could see I'm going up. Once again, this is such a huge mortise, I had to do one half and then flip it over and do the other half. So same process, I don't have to move anything because it's equidistance off of the edges, front and back, as well as side to side. So I could keep all my jigs set up and then left with that chunk in the center. Um, these are those aprons they are done gluing up. I could take the clamps off and break them all apart and then clean these up as well. These glued up really pretty, pretty straight, so I was able to just send these through the table saw. I usually wouldn't do that if they didn't glue up straight, but there wasn't a lot of undulation so I felt okay with sliding them through. I just trimmed these off a little bit. I wanted them essentially to be about the size that they are and I believe that was two and a half inches as well were the thickness of these. So this is the lumber for the bottom stretcher. Once again it was just a plank of oak that I ripped into four strips. They're going to be laminated together in order to get me a big chunk of lumber. I believe these were about um, an inch and three quarters and then they're a little over seven feet long because the, the base is about seven feet apart, so that inner dimension's a little bit smaller. I sent them to the planer to clean up the faces and then I could glue them together. Now these had a fair amount of bowing in them, but you'll see with the clamps, the clamps kind of pull everything together. And then I let this set up overnight as well. could see with, with stuff like this there's never enough clamps to keep everything flat and true. I wanted this to be pretty pretty much the final dimension so I made sure that this glued up really well. I still had to plane it down a little bit but it, it ended up being pretty much this final dimension. 
So now I could go to the feet and start carving those. It's going to be the exact same process as the pedestals. I'm going to rough card with the chainsaw and then move to the angle grinder. I kind of have a, a yellow, yellow lumber mark on there to cut this out. But then with this chainsaw, I could get a little bit of a curve with it if I if I'm have a steady enough hand. So I rough cut this part off and then I could go through with the curve and, and get really close to that line. Now, someone mentioned in the previous video that I use a lot of tools for this process, and that is true, but that's because I don't have a bandsaw. If I had a bandsaw, I would rough cut out all of these pieces before I put them together, and there wouldn't be that much cleanup. I don't have a bandsaw, so this is the process I came up with for getting around that, um, and I had all of these tools from previous projects. So this is the side. You'll be able to see this one a little bit better. I could cut out that rough triangle which is pretty easy. This is a new bar and a, and a new chain. And then I could just go through and with the saw, get really close to that line. It doesn't look like I'm removing a lot of the material, but remember the kerf of the chainsaw is very wide. It's probably around a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit thicker. So I'm removing a, um, a quite, a, quite a bit of material and I could get that slight curve. So then with these, like I said, exact same process, and I now had this rough cut out, I could use the, the, the disc on my angle grinder to then contour this whole thing. Now I had the Sharpie marks on the side of the piece, and I'm gonna follow those Sharpie marks as best as I can. If this is a little bit out of dimension in one way or the other, um, you'll never notice it, because this is gonna be cheated to the floor, obviously, because it's the base, as well as under the tabletop. Now that angle grinder does a pretty good job of getting it smooth, but then I'll start off with a 40 grit belt in the in the um, belt sander and do that. Now all this stuff is still pretty rough sanded. I'm gonna go back and take it. I usually take everything up to about 120. You could see that curve turned out pretty nicely with this process. For that chunk in the middle, I was actually gonna drill this out, but I started chiseling it and it came out pretty quickly. So that was how I removed that big block of wood in the center of all of these bases. So there's a little bit of a V cut detail. I could have done this with the router bit, but um, I didn't. But once again, I don't use, I don't mind chisel work. So I made a straight cut with a saw to get down to my valley. And then I could just use a chisel in order to creep up on that valley and make that V groove. So I did this on both sides and it gave me that decorative cut that's on both sides of the piece. You could see this, the one on the other side's already done um, what that, what that final, final cut looks like. So then for the bottom, you don't want the whole base sitting on this flat surface because it's pretty, pretty impossible to get it perfectly flat and it's definitely not likely that the customer's house will have a flat floor. So you only want two pressure points. It just kind of eliminates the potential of rocking. The, there's many, many ways to do this. I just decided to make many curve cuts on the radial arm saw. It's not as tedious as it looks. And then I could just go through and clean it up with a chisel and also the bottom has a decorative uh, curve at the end. So this was pretty easy. I just went through and, and um, added a little slant to that with a chisel and that was done as well. That's pretty much what it looks like. And then I could use the belt sander on all those curves and clean it up. So this is fitting the base into the mortise. There was a little bit of fine tuning to do on this, but surprisingly not a lot. And I do apologize, I thought I was going to get to the other stretchers in this video, but it's already extremely long and I don't want it to be a 20 minute video. So this is pretty much where I'm gonna stop for today. And then the next video will pick up with making the top stretchers as well as the bottom stretcher for, for this piece.